What is up? I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video today. I'm incredibly excited because we're going to be unboxing something that's really been in a while in the making for me. I've got my first 3D printer here. I've been into 3D printing kind of like passively, I guess, for probably about five years now. I've been watching a lot of content creators, prop makers, um, other techies like Barnacles, uh, 3D printing nerd, just all sorts of people making these great videos about 3D printing, creating props creating uh, just like modifications for their setups and their desk and just little novel things and some very, very useful things. So I've wanted to get one for quite a while, couldn't find that price point and uh, functionality that I wanted, but then finally I did some research and I decided on this guy. This is the Mono Price Maker Select Plus. It retails for $3.99, I believe. That's what I got it for on Amazon. I chose next day shipping so I can get it here as fast as possible. This is Friday and I'm gonna spend all weekend setting this guy up and doing some initial prints and hopefully be able to give you guys some first impressions. So without much further ado, I'm really, really excited and I wanna get into this, so let's take a look. All right, so hopping into the box, I was really happy to see that everything seemed to be packaged really, really well for such a heavy box. I was worried some things might have shifted around, but the high density closed cell foam in here seemed to have kept everything in place. The stuff is really nice. It would make even Linus happy. Let's first go ahead and take a look at the accessories box. Opening it up, first we have a USB type B cable to connect it directly to your computer, which I actually don't recommend. Then we've got a US power cable, presumably if you've got some other derivative of this in another country, it would be the correct cable for your region. Then we've got a bed scraper. We've got the two pieces of the filament spool holder. Then we've got a bag of hardware containing all these screws and the Allen keys and such that you will need to put it together. Then we've got this little thing, which I'm not really sure what it is. Then there is a included SD card, which actually has some files on it for you to print right away. Next up, we have a drill bit for cleaning the extruder head and that's it. So looking at this first main piece, this is the kind of base and Y axis components. It's got all of the uh, major electronic components besides the stepper motors and fans and things like that. It's got the PSU, the control board and all that inside. Then we've got another layer of foam and beneath that is the Y gantry assembly. This has the stepper motors and lead screws and smooth rails for the Z axis and the X axis all connected in one. Then finally looking underneath everything we've got some sample filaments, the owner's manual and a extra bed pad which seems to have been damaged a little bit in shipping. That seems to be the only thing I've noticed that has any damage and is a little disappointing. Here's a nice view of everything that comes in the package all nulled out. Some things I forgot to mention were some little rubber feet to go under the bed and kind of protect your table and some zip ties for cable management. All right, so here it is in all of its glory. This is basically an i3 clone. It's actually a rebrand. Monoprice doesn't actually produce these. I believe they were produced by a company called Wanhao and it's a rebrand of their i3 duplicator plus i believe but mono price i think does all of their own own qa they've got their own firmware on here in terms of setup it was really really straightforward in terms of getting this whole thing together it's really just six screws you have to do up in order to get this main vertical piece attached to the main horizontal piece and that's really it there's also uh, two screws to get the handle together and it kind of just screws on really really easily So very very easy setup if you're considering whether or not you want to buy a kit Versus something pre-assembled and you're in the $400 price range. That's definitely uh, a huge thing I know people who've gotten kits and it's taking them all weekend um, In order to get it together my buddy got a X carve Which is a kit and that took him like the better part of two weeks in order to get it together So something to think about if you're in the market and looking at this price point uh, the electronics they all use these um, kind of like JST connectors which are keyed so you can't put them in backwards so very very straightforward and they're very very clearly labeled with A, B, C, D all the way through all of the things. I did have one problem where the one of the cables that goes up to the extruder up here, the extruder assembly, it wasn't attached on the side and it wasn't in the instructions that you need to make sure that that is attached, but in general, you just need to make sure you go through everything, 
look at every single um, wire harness and JST and just make sure they're all connected in. When I did the initial setup, the hot end wasn't getting hot and it was showing zero degrees for the PLA and I just had to plug that in, turn off the machine, turn it back on and then it was able to read everything and actually heat it up. As for the instruction manual, it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, very well printed, it's sturdy, it's not gonna like, you know just dissipate and like i've literally had other manuals for other products to literally just like deteriorate as i've had them in the box but uh this is really nice it's very clear it's uh very informative has everything from what's included in the box to all the different parts this isn't kind of like other types of consumer electronics where it's just like it's a black box and you don't need to know about it you just press buttons you kind of need to know what's going on with all the different parts so rtfm i definitely recommend reading the manual for any 3d printer that you get but it goes through all the different uh, parts of the vertical and horizontal assembly all the plugs where everything is shows you how to use the menu system which is pretty straightforward and pretty simple i really like that shows you how to unpack it. it's kind of weird that that comes after everything else probably put that in the front mono price uh then it has in assembly instructions very clear there were a couple times where it told me to do a couple things maybe it's from a previous uh iteration of the product but it told me i needed to do the four screws on either side and then it told me i need to flip it on its side and put in four screws those were already in that wasn't a separate piece or anything like that so um you know like creating these products manuals is pretty difficult as a product iterate you don't want to have to reprint all of your things so understandable but maybe have something in here to as an addendum like hey go online and check out the updated instructions and stuff and then you can just have a pdf or something like that or just load a pdf onto the sd card that that would be pretty good too but i do enjoy having the physical manual in terms of what's included one thing i thought was strange they don't really tell you what everything included is for they don't really tell you what this piece of like ptfe is for they don't tell you what this guy is for i i imagine it's i i really don't know what this is for um but yeah, I, I would like to know what everything included is actually for. I don't even think that this is listed in the uh, what's in the box. So if you know what this is, please tell me. All right, next we went through the process of setting this up and getting ready to print. The first thing I noticed is that uh, they recommend you get a carpenter's um, level. I have this level plum um, and you need to make sure that the surface you set it on is level. And I thought my, some of my tables were level and they turned out to not actually be level. And the reason this causes a problem is that there are two of these um, Z axis motors which affect the leveling of the x axis movement assembly and those can get off they're they're not synced up motors at all so you're going to have problems where as the prints you're doing are going on it's going to get out of sync and basically before every print you probably need to re-level those and then also re-level your bed it doesn't have any auto leveling features it's got this kind of spring mechanism which means that the extruder can actually push down if it actually goes too far in the z down in the z axis but uh, basically the process is tighten these all the way up so that the heated bed is as far down as it can go. Then you home it and you put it approximately two by two inches away from each corner. So you put it in the first corner, you undo the screw until it gets the height of one sheet of paper. And then you move it to the other corners and you undo the screw and uh, level it that way. That way after you've leveled your uh, Z axis, your X axis rather, and then you've loved the bed, everything should be in sync. And that's what the auto levelers essentially do. They go to the four corners, um, they, they press down to see what the height is, and then they automatically level your Z axis. Based on that, some can actually level the bed and things like that, but that's a very important process. And I actually didn't do it right the very first time and it's kind of embarrassing, but um, you can notice that I had it too close. And when it got to the middle, it actually scratched up the um, surface of the print bed liner. So it hasn't caused any problems in terms of the prints. Most of the prints have still adhered very well and they've turned out very, very good. But just something to be aware of. Auto leveling would be nice, but uh, I think at this price point, it's not too big of a deal to um, have to level things out yourself before every print. Once you get used to it, it's really, really super easy and pretty fast. But yeah, making sure that you have a solid table um, that is level uh, is very, very important. Different tables, some may not allow you to level, so you might have to start shimming stuff. So the next part of the process before we can get ready and print was loading up the filaments. First, you want to go ahead and preheat the bed and the uh, nozzle to the right temperatures. And basically this printer works primarily with ABS and PLA. So there's two settings in the menu. You can go ahead, just dial those in. It'll heat everything up. Again, I had trouble because 
my stupid little extruder cable on the side wasn't plugged in, but once I got that sorted out, um, everything worked fine. I wish they had a diagram of what is going on inside of this extruder. The process is basically, once it gets up to temperature, you press down the spring loaded um, kind of like clamp and you push the filament in and it says push in until you feel significant resistance. And that's, I mean, A, that's gonna be pretty freaking subjective as to what significant resistance is. You get se several different levels of resistance while you're pushing it through. After a while, I reloaded this two or three times just to try to get the experience of doing it. And um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you kind of get a feel for what's going on inside. But again, if they just had like a bisection diagram of what it looked like, that would make things so much easier and put it ease new, new users like me as to, okay, I, I can see what's going on. I can kind of feel what's going on. I got it down to that point. You know, I think everything will work out a lot easier if that was the case. Then I went on to print the first three test things. One came on the bench. It's, I guess it's part of their QA process where they just uh, print out one and it was a little white butterfly that was this guy. And checking it out, I was already pretty impressed. Um, obviously these are uh, one of the four G code files that they already have on the SD card and they've probably tuned it, the printer, uh, tuned the G code file to work very, very well with the printer. Um, I've only printed out these three things, but initial quality, I'm very, very satisfied with. I went ahead and started printing out some of the random things that were on the thing. And apparently they size this down for when they do their QA test, I'm guessing, so that's faster. So I printed that out again with the yellow filament. It's um, the file one. They're not labeled like butterfly. They're just G code one, G code two, G code three, G code four. So this turned out really, really well. It's obviously bigger. There are a couple stringy, maybe over extrusion type things on here, but it's, it's stuff that you could clean up really, really easily. There are some areas which are a little bit less well finished than the other side. Um, but in terms of cleanup, I don't expect that this would take very, very long at all. Um, and I'm really, really impressed with these sample prints so far. This was another guy, it's still on the raft, and it's just this little recliner thing. Then the last prints I just did was this swan, and this one I do notice a little bit more of a rough feel in some areas. I think I could clean it up and get it to a point where um, I'd be very, very happy with it. But overall, I gotta say, um, for an initial setup and initial prints, this was fairly no fuss. Besides the bed leveling, besides the loading up the filaments and the wire not being connected, everything was extremely straightforward. Everything was pretty much as expected. I'm going to be trying a bunch of different filaments. I'm going to be trying a bunch of different prints, custom prints, things that I've designed. You can go a lot more into depth on that. And I want to really, really get into that. Let you guys know what the uh, pluses and minuses of this are for a full review. So I can't wait to 3D print a whole lot more things. I want to 3D print all the things. If you guys have any ideas of things I should print, I will be doing the um, the benchmark um, prints that everybody tends to print out. I might do some more complicated print like the marble games and stuff like that, but that uses up a lot of filament. And if something goes wrong, you kind of feel like crap because it's like a 30 hour print or something like that. But I will be doing some props. I will be doing some DIY stuff. Uh, some, maybe some custom cable management. I, I have a lot of ideas and I'm finally, I'm so, so glad that I'll finally be able to actually, you know, make some things. So uh, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a little bit something about this printer and 3D printing in general. If you have any ideas or any feedback, let me know in the comments below. I am so, so excited about this and I'm hoping that you guys are excited about it too. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs down if you did not, but try to leave some feedback in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more 3D printing goodness. We got PC builds coming up, uh, video card reviews. Very, very excited about some of the stuff I'm getting in from uh, a couple companies. PC builds, some case uh, reviews, um, all sorts of stuff. So subscribe to the channel for that awesomeness. Check out the description for links to all of my social media things where I'm posting behind the scenes um, you know like little uh, clips of printing stuff and just all sorts of things I have going on some behind the scenes stuff and that's it thank you guys for watching I'll see you in the next one peace